Thank you very much. Appreciate the opportunity to be here. And we'll try to keep this uh, light, even though it's a topic that's not a lot of fun. Um, I've got good news and bad news for you. Uh, bad news is you're going to die. Uh, good news is it doesn't have to be nearly as expensive as you think it is uh, on, on your loved ones. Um, any funeral home directors in here this morning? Some of my best friends are funeral home directors, so I, I don't, I'm not stepping on any toes. I'm just wanting to supply some information. And our company, which will be called either Carolina Transitions or Last Rights, R-I-G-H-T-S, um, is going to be a con consumer-driven uh, program. It will be a consumer uh, information driven program on how to die and how to die economically, not cheaply, economically. Uh, you know, when we buy a home, we'll look at homes, most of us probably for a year or more sometimes, looking for the right house, looking for the right price. We go to buy a car. Uh, we look maybe for weeks, maybe even months or so, looking for the right car uh, because it's a big investment. Um, weddings. I don't know if any of you have daughters. Um, Weddings have gotten crazy expensive lately. I uh, just had my daughter just got married last summer. Uh, I should be in the cheap wedding business, or I should have been in the cheap <laughs> wedding business uh, last summer. Um, but then the next biggest thing almost anybody buys is a funeral. Uh, funerals now can cost upwards low end seven thousand dollars, high end twenty thousand dollars, or more. Okay, the thing with that that makes that so critical is. From the moment you die, for most people, you've got 24 hours to decide how you're going to spend that $7,000 to $20,000. Uh, if you die at a hospital, the people at the hospital are going to come up to your uh, dearly beloved and ask them, which, hot, which funeral home do you want the body to go to? And once you name one, the deceased goes to the funeral home and the clock starts ticking. I mean, it starts ticking fast. As to decisions that have to be made, uh, financial decisions that have to be made, um, and what's going to happen following that. What most people don't understand is, or know, or realize, or because we don't like to think about planning our funerals, you don't have to go to a funeral home. You don't have to be embalmed. You don't have to be buried in a casket. You don't have to have necessarily a vault. You don't have to have to have a cemetery. In North Carolina, you can be buried in your own backyard if local, uh, uh, local um, uh, laws permit it. You don't have to be buried in a vault if a cemetery doesn't require it. You don't have to be buried in a casket. You can be buried in a cloth bag if you so desire, uh, and certain regulations cover it. All of that cuts down dramatically on the price of a casket. Uh, you don't have to buy a casket at a funeral home. Sam sells them, Costco sells them. You can have, you can go on Amazon.com today and have a casket at your home or funeral home tomorrow. Uh, by law, the funeral home, even if you select one to have your uh, uh, final services uh, to be handled by a funeral home, they have to accept a casket that is not theirs. Uh, they have to deal with it. Uh, you can go on Amazon.com this morning and buy a solid cherry casket for $1,400, which would cost you about $7,500 in a funeral home. Exact same casket. Um, so there's ways to get around uh, expensive funerals, but it takes some information. And again, most people don't want to go to the time or trouble or they just think it's kind of creepy to do that. But we're talking thousands and thousands of dollars here. They granted, if you're the one that's dead, you're not going to have to worry about it. But somebody <laughs> is, okay? Um, what we are going to be doing is not selling insurance. It's not pre-planning funeral insurance. It's not. We're not funeral directors. We're not the embalmers. You don't have to be embalmed in North Carolina either. Um, we're we we are not licensed funeral directors. We are consumer advocates to get information out to individuals. What we will do. For a fee of $79 for one person, $99 for a couple, we will provide you with the information you need to make logical, reasonable choices in your burial funeral options. Uh, for an additional fee of $49, we will go with you to the funeral home when your dearly beloved passes away. Uh, we will go with you so you don't get there and you make all kinds of crazy decisions about 
you know, this is the last time I'm ever gonna be able to do this, so I wanna do it really well. Remember, you're buying a casket. It's going in the ground. Never to be seen again, hopefully, okay? <laughs> you're putting it in a vault. Never to be seen again. Uh, they're gonna try to sell you an 18 gauge vault instead of a 20 gauge vault that's about $1,000 cheaper. The difference, the 20 gauge vault is gonna last about 1,000 years less than the 18 gauge vault is gonna last. Uh, don't need it. There's ways to still have a traditional funeral, uh, have it uh, more economical, uh, but we will go with you to remind you, here's what you said you wanted to do. Our, our goal is to help people make decisions up front as to do I really need to go to a funeral home one, and if you go to a funeral home, fine, then do I really need all of the services that a funeral home provides? Do I need to rent a car to drive from a church, synagogue, or a mosque to a graveyard? <laughs> Don't need that. Get in your own car and go. Um, do I need a plastic flower arrangement on my front door showing people that somebody in my house has died? No, people that are gonna to come to your house knowing you had a loved one die in your family, know where you live, you don't need a white flower on your door. Do I, do I need a stand in my house to put a book on so people can sign? All these things cost, and they start adding up more and more and more. Um, do, what kind of flowers do I need? Do I need flowers? Uh, again, got wonderful florist friends. You can easily drop $1,000 on a, a casket funeral arrangement uh, flower. Uh, there's ways to, to get around that. So we want to provide uh, information. We want to make sure people know there's options. Uh, organ donation, body donation, where you don't have to spend anything. Uh, green funerals, we can now, in North Carolina, there's a cemetery in Wake Forest that will, that will have, you can have a green funeral. Uh, you can go there. Uh, you can be cremated and buried there, or your whole body can be buried there. You put in a biodegradable casket. You are lowered into the ground with ropes. Uh, in a uh, setting that doesn't look like a traditional cemetery, it's out in the woods. Uh, they plant you, excuse the language, but <laughs> it's what we're doing. They plant you bes bes underneath a tree uh, in a ring of up to 14 other people who are also planted around the same tree. They put a rock on top of your grave uh, with your name on it, the date that you're born, not anything you want written on the rock, uh, <coughs> and you biodegrade in a matter of years, much you know, less, almost no carbon footprint if you're concerned about those things. Some people go the cremation route. Uh, they're thinking, uh, you know, they're lessening the carbon footprint. Uh, well, not necessarily because it takes a lot of energy to <coughs> cremate somebody. Um, North Carolina has not adopted it yet, but alkaline hydrolysis is coming. It's already available in some states, which is going to be an alternative to cremation, uh, which is going to be a much greener way uh, if that's your, your interest uh, as well. But we want to provide information, again, for, uh, provided ahead of time, uh, provide people to make logical choices, smart choices, in the way they are going to uh, leave their family with not having to make decisions. I'm, I'm a minister. Uh, more times than I like to have seen, I've been with people when they've died and been with their families. They look at me and say, now what do we do? Well. The hospital people come in and say, which funeral home do you want to go to? And they think, well, hmm. Seemed like my Aunt Tilly went to Jernigan and Orange. Let's call them. Good choice. Wonderful funeral home. Rogers and Brett, all, all the funeral homes they've had were wonderful, wonderful choices. Providing the same service, they are coming to the hospital, collecting your body, taking it to their place of business, doing the things that they're going to do to eventually put you in the ground. They all charge different prices for the, the exact same result. The end result of you being moved from the hospital, the hospice, wherever you may be, to a hole in the ground or some other facility. So if they're providing the same service essentially, why don't you compare and shop for the prices? Um, and most people don't do that. We just go to the first one we think of, we go to where our, you know, our parents went, grandparents went, uh, aunts and uncles uh, utilized without doing a little research. Well, people again, people don't want to do the research, we're doing the research for you. Uh, and then we're talking you through it. We're keeping you updated on uh, every year, you'll get an update 
<clears throat> without any additional charge on new cemeteries or new funeral homes or when alkaline hydrolysis comes into the uh, uh, effect in uh, and use in North Carolina, maybe <coughs> uh, go uh, go that route. We'll provide you with that every every year, and again, uh, the opportunity to go with you to uh, the funeral home and help you make the decisions as well. The second other major area of service that we're going to be provided is pre need wakes. Um, again, this comes from the fact that we'll spend fifty thousand dollars on a wedding. Believe me, you can do that. Uh, that may last a year. So why don't we have a party that's going to last forever? Uh, if you know, we know we're going to die, let's have an end of life celebration. Uh, and we're going to provide the services for that. DJ, music, food, venue, everything that you need to have your wake so you can be there <clears throat> and celebrate with your friends. You know, you've seen the drill, you've been there, you walk by the casket, well doesn't he look good? Why don't you be sitting at a table with food and, and drink all around you? Let them come by and say, hey, looking good today. Let's party. Um, again, we're all going to do it. We're all going to die. Let's, you know, let's have one last party before we go uh, and, and enjoy, enjoy the time together. Much more, much more exciting, beneficial really to the family uh, than the, the two hours, three hours you might stand around a coffin in a funeral home um, uh, in grief and mourning when you can celebrate it. Uh, you know, we get to the, the funeral itself and we talk about it being a celebration of life. It is, so let's celebrate it. Um, so we'll have that service provided as well. But again, we're not funeral directors, we're not uh, uh, funeral homes. It's simply to provide consumer information to people who uh, will eventually need the information at some time, but they've been <coughs> caught in that span of my family member passed away six o'clock on Monday afternoon. Funeral home wants me to be at their office at 10 o'clock on Tuesday morning for something that's gonna be over with by Thursday morning at lunchtime. And in, that, in the meantime, $20,000 has been spent. And you come back and say, wow, did I really need to do that? At the moment you did, uh, you think you did. Uh, again, funeral homes, let's understand, they provide an amazing service to the community. They are a business. It is the funeral industry, okay? It's a funeral business. I was looking through some of their material not too long ago. They do a tremendous uh, continuing education programs in the funeral industry. One of their courses that they offer at their uh, con uh, conventions, when they have conventions, uh, which must really be a fun time, uh, but they have uh, conventions. <laughs> how, how to upsell your client without upsetting them. How to upsell the client without upsetting them. You know, how do I get them to buy the wreath on the, the, or rent the wreath on the door? How do I get them to rent the cars? How do I get them to rent the venue to have the sign? That's fine, it's a business. You know, people are in business to make money and that's how they, uh, that's how they make the money, but it doesn't have to be that way. Uh, there are options available, we just wanna make people aware of what those options are, how they can economically have a wonderful end of life event for their family member, uh, or even have a pre-end of life event for their family member, uh, more economically um, uh, to look at the green options, the donation options, uh, and make it available uh, to them as they go forward. <coughs> Questions? <coughs> yes? What are some of the uh, medical schools that you <coughs> know about that will accept body donations? All the, all the medical schools in North Carolina, I know, will accept body donations. Uh, and it's a fairly simple process. You just make prearrangements with them. Uh, and when you pass away or when someone who has made that decision uh, passes away, uh, they will come uh, and collect the remains. Uh, again, the key here, one of the things we stress or will be stressing is Every decision you make in this regard, not, you not only do you need to know that you've made the decision, but everybody in your family needs to know that you've made the decision, okay? Uh, because I've, again, also been in the situation where families get to the funeral home and one child wants to put dad away this way and another child wants to put dad away this way. Um, and you get, I have seen some of the biggest knockdown drag out fights you can get into at a funeral home as to how, how are we doing this. 
because no decisions were made and their own dad didn't make the decision ahead of time and let them know. Uh, so we will keep it on file. Uh, we'll make sure they've got copies, notarized copies of this is what I want. Do it this way. Um, and again, it's one of the uh, greatest things you can do as a parent for a child is to go ahead and make your funeral wishes known, uh, even down to the gravestone, uh, because uh, you can get into, you know, do we want flowers in the corner? Do we want, you know, what, uh, what do we want on the tombstone? Go ahead and make it. You know, they, they don't have to build it. I've got, I've got friends who already have their tombstone in place, just going to, you know, tap in the date when it comes. Uh, but it's, it's one of, again, one of the most expensive things we do in life that we do nothing, absolutely, almost nothing about to prepare for it. Uh, and organ donate, body, whole body donation is something that often gets just completely abandoned in the process, and schools need them. Now, I will say, uh, when you donate a body to a school, you can't, like, go six months later and say, well, can you pull him out and let me see him? Because they may not keep him. Uh, so medical schools will transfer bodies. You know, we've only need so many at this time, but we'll take this one and, you know, we swap off with other schools. So that is, you know, if you want your body to go to Duke, it may wind up at Chapel Hill, and that, you know, you, you know, that might be the worst thing you can imagine. Um, but, uh, but look how much closer to heaven you already are when you get to Chapel Hill. Yeah, um, it's closer to ECU. But again, we, we made sure they know that. Wonderful idea of donating your body to, to a medical school, to, to donating it to science, but understand what comes with that. So one of the things, as you were mentioning about flowers in the door, there's also been uh, something recently where um, it, it makes your house a target. Yes. Um, for there's you know lots of great upstanding citizens that see that as a sign of the house being empty. They know that you're going to be gone for visitation. They know you're going to be gone for a funeral. They know you're going to be gone for extended period of times, which means there's not going to be anybody there. So as part of that planning, um, and for you, one of the things that we did when my grandmother passed away last January was we made sure that there was somebody designated to stay at the home um, just in case somebody decided. We didn't do the flower on the door thing, but she was 104 and a half, and so um, it was quite well known. It was in the newspaper, and it was, I mean, she touched so many lives. <laughs> yes. Um, but we did make sure that the house had somebody there for that purpose. Yeah, every um, day you open the Fayetteville Observer, you've got a list of potential burglary uh, and addresses. Right, addresses. right there, and times. Yeah. Addresses and times. Right. Did um, you have something else? So, yes, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm actually on, on the other side. I'm uh, with New York Life, and we do lots of creative things for small businesses and building capital, but at the end of the day, we're New York Life, and we specialize in life insurance. Um, some of the things that I've come up with as I've talked with different clients and things, are you familiar with the Living Reefs program? Yes. That's, a, that's one that just blows me away, which the short version of it is, is um, you utilize the cremation services, and then your remains get put into a uh, cement jack rock type thing that is put into the ocean and coral reefs, um, the coral will attach to it and it builds new coral reefs out in the ocean. So that's one program. Are you, uh, uh, the diamonds, are you familiar that you yeah, can have you your remains? Make jewelry. You can have your, your remains compressed into diamonds. Um, the blown glass one was a new one that I've seen recently. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, instead of traditional urns, and, and a traditional urn can be everything from a cigar box, uh, paper bag to wildly ornate, uh, but they can uh, uh, blow them in the glass, make jewelry out of them. Uh, you can wear your dearly beloved around your neck. Uh, uh, they feel uh, uh, one of the more novel things is they'll take your remains, put them in a shotgun shell and shoot you off in space. Um, you know, lot, lots of lots of options that uh, that uh, people don't think about but are but are out there. And I've had several clients to say, well, I, you know, I don't I don't want a funeral, I want a party. Yeah. And they their answers when I said, Well what does that look like to you? What do we need to set aside to make that work for you? I, I've heard, well I wanna take I want all my friends to go to Chuck E. Cheese 
to I've heard of big barbecues with kegs and da 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 da, da and, and, and they have these ideas. So there's definitely people out there that are, are thinking in that direction. Um, but they're thinking about it, but you have to encourage them that this is a legitimate right. idea and, and, right. and plan for it. Yes. So um, what's your plan? Um, <coughs> um, how, how are people going to find out that you have this information and be able to access it? We're, go we're going to start marketing uh, primarily through churches, uh, and this may sound a little morbid, uh, but nursing homes. Um, well, so you're saying it's going to be just direct, direct, direct marketing. Person. So no website or there will be a website where once we decide what our name is going to be, we'll oh, okay. we'll, we'll be going in that direction. But yes, there will be a website. There's going to be uh, direct marketing. Uh, we will, to some degree, even market um, through non-traditional uh, funeral homes, which are primarily crematories, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, in our area there are crematories that are not funeral homes. Uh, and most, a lot of people do not realize that you can have a direct burial where instead of calling a funeral home, you can call a crematory to come to the hospital, uh, collect the remains, go straight to the crematory. Uh, they cremate the body, call you, come get the ashes, mm -hmm. you do with them what you want to, and you never go about a funeral home. And then my second question is, um, what, what would prevent people from uh, just Googling it themselves? Nothing, but they won't. You don't think so? No. I can guarantee it. <laughs> I can guarantee really that about almost everybody in here doesn't have enough life insurance, and I can almost guarantee you're not going to reach out to somebody who needs it. It's the same situation that he's in. People don't want to face the fact that one day we're going to stop breathing. Now, you may check for somebody else. Right. You know, well, just we tend not to check for ourselves. And we tend to think, we, we even under those conditions, we would tend to limit our options. We would go to the places that we're, we've heard of or are familiar with. Mm -hmm. uh, again, let's just say for the sake of argument, because they're right across the street from each other, Rogers and Brees and Jernigan Warren. We'd stop our search there. We wouldn't look at other options. Uh, we would say, okay, and, and once we got past those two and saw that the prices were somewhat in line, we said, well, probably everything's going to be just like that. Not the case. There's going to be cheaper alternatives, more expensive alternatives. Uh, but we don't like to think about dying uh, and the yeah. concept of thinking about outside of Halloween, thinking about death and caskets and those kinds of things. Yeah. I mean, most people aren't going to walk into Walmart this afternoon and say, can I see your selection of caskets? <laughs> right. But they can. Yes. You can go on Amazon.com, and if you're a Prime member, your casket will be on your doorstep tomorrow morning, uh, or anywhere else you want to send it. Right. Uh, well, but we tend not to do that. And, and most decisions are impulse buys when yes. it comes to funerals, and that's well, one of the things that really stood out to me, um, because because it is because even when I sit down with them, I usually present with to a, fo a person. There are many alternatives. What what kind of funds do you want available? And I have some kind of ranges that I I suggest that traditional funerals, these are the averages, this is the average for so and so and so. But at the end of the day, what the service he is offering is more tailored fit to, I mean, I know already, I want a video, I want to do a video before I pass away, and I want to make sure that that video plays on that day. I, I have certain songs picked out and whatever, just because as I've gone through life at 43 years, hopefully I'll make it to 104 like my grandmother. However, Life happens. Well, I've got free shipping today. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Almost all caskets are free shipping. Sure. <laughs> <Well, laughs> um, I'm sorry I didn't get in on the front end of the uh, presentation, but I will say, as the wife, of uh, a uh, funeral director for almost 34 years and now my son is in the funeral service industry as well he's also a funeral director i can say an amen to what rick said when he came when i came in this is an industry it is a business and the best day's work that you can do is again what several other people have said it might be tough sit down have the conversation, know what people want, pre-plan, 
because so many decisions, and I'm sure Rick said this at the very beginning, are made through emotion, guilt. You know, I, I, I want mama to go in the very best. And um, when when it comes to selection, you've got sealer caskets, non-sealer caskets. You've got hardwoods. You've got pine boxes. You've got uh, 18 gauge. You've got then you've got the vault to deal with, and all of this, and it and it adds up. And uh, it is a business, and again, the best day's work you can do is to pre-plan when the emotion and the guilt is, is not there, and because as, as the young lady said there with the life insurance, it's going to happen to all of us. It's inevitable. That's one thing that we all have in common. <coughs> and, and one of the we want not going to be here one day. Right. So we want people to be prepared fun. because a lot of folks, and maybe not every funeral home does it. The ones I've dealt with generally do. When you go in for that consultation where they start telling you how much it's going to cost, when they get to the end, they say, "Now, what kind of life insurance did they have?" And they say, "Bring the policy because it's ours until we get." The price of the, unless you're going to pay cash for it, that's how they make. I mean, it's not like you can exactly. go pick them they're up. Going to, they're going to sometimes the first thing they're going to ask you is, and and may I ask how you're going, how to, are you going to handle our services yeah. provided? Yes, which is a nice way of saying, How are you going to pay for it? And they do take Visa and MasterCard, yep. okay? <laughs> but you better have the limit on there to handle it. <coughs> now, some of them will not bury your loved one until the bill is completely paid. Gone are the days of floating it, yeah. and if you don't have insurance to cover it, and, and some of them will say, sort of like the doctor's office, I'll file your insurance, but we want our money up front. I mean, I'm just, I, I could write a book, okay? Just, and I, I've heard a lot, so I'm just saying. So I, Unless you're from but, Georgia, and they got you stacked out. <laughs> this is true, this is, but, but by law, but by law, that as, a, as an insurance agent and a company, I can only give the check to your beneficiary. I cannot give the right. check, unless your right. beneficiary is the funeral home. So don't think that if you have a million dollar policy, that the whole thing is going right. to go to the funeral home. Exactly. So, the, the check goes directly to the beneficiary. Choose your beneficiary wisely because if your beneficiary decides they're not paying for your services, somebody's going to have to pay for it. All right, so you want to change the perception of the of the industry and start in advance instead of waiting until the last minute. Have you got a marketing budget? Working on it. Mm. <clears throat> I start saving my pennies. Yeah. Because will your husband look at this as a competition or an act I, i'm sorry i honestly came in when he was saying let me tell you this is a business i, I had all intentions of being here at nine o'clock because rick and i know each other and i wanted to hear what he had to say but i don't know i don't know i didn't hear the first part of his presentation Fun so. funeral homes have significant pre-planning services staff and they are getting to have more and more of them it is still we're we're taking we we're taking it away from the funeral home. We want to meet at Starbucks or we want to meet somewhere offsite in your home to get you away from the funeral home setting. What I'm getting at is, are they going to look like in other professions when you get somebody new that comes in and wants to shake things up, like the uh, let's say the hyperbarics lady that came and gave the presentation. The medical doctors don't like to refer patients to them, even though that they can cure people better than some doctors because that's the way to do it because it takes money out of their pocket. See what I'm getting at? Right. So do they look at you as a, a help to their industry or somebody they want to crush and not do that? I, I'm sure they would prefer things to stay as they are. How we are going to in turn market to funeral homes is to say, here's what we're doing. Now, we are, by law, they have to give us the information. Federal Trade Commission says they have to provide their price list. If you call a lot of funeral homes and ask for their price list, they will first encourage you, well, why don't you come on down and let's talk about it, rather than sending you the price list. They have to send you the price list. Um, we are going to work with uh, funeral homes so that we make sure, and they make sure, their information gets into the hands of the people we're talking to. Uh, so we're going to do some marketing for them. We're not going to say, go to this funeral home. Is you have, would you have a symbiotic relationship with somebody like you? I can see that being as something as an advantage because, and, and my, my whole business, it, 
outlook is the more network, the more connections, the better. But I do sit down with people and, and they get, well, I, I never thought about that. Well, I guess I gotta have to pay. And, and they don't. And, and it would be nice to be able to say, um, you know, I've got this guy, this is great new company, Carolina Transition, West Rights, whatever you decide with, you know, take take a look, take a listen to them, you know, go to, go to your, to be able to give that as a resource, I see it as a, as a definite advantage, um, especially when the, my clients, the ones that are older, the ones that have just you know, I've met with a family that just watched someone to pass away and saw the struggle of someone going through that. When you deal with that, it's real. And that's when people, oh, I'm gonna talk to somebody. <clears throat> So right, to get back I, to his uh, point here, not to interrupt you, but uh, we're, there's some things that I'd just like to, for him to espouse. How did you get to the $99, dollars $99 and what's your overhead? Are you going to start on a shoestring? Do you have an office? I've got a room in my house. And uh -huh. so where do you want to go with it? Ideally, uh, we will, uh, as we attract clients, uh, we will uh, move into a modest office some type of storefront just so that we can have the visibility there uh, but then also to expand it uh, through a network of uh, potential uh, not franchises but to carry uh, it into other communities doing the exact same thing just with different information uh, and expand it that way again uh, mm -hmm. on a on a shoestring budget uh, the the price points simply um, kind of factored in the time to collect the data uh, the time that would spend uh, with spending two or three hours with a family going through the, uh, the process of getting their data together uh, so, sort of works out at a price point I'm comfortable with. So let, let me go back to now. Okay, okay so business-wise, don't get me wrong, I understand this is a very emotional topic and it's very something that it's very needed in this community. Um, however, business-wise and sustainability, like $99 a consult, how many people are you going to have to see a month to have a legitimate business that, that's going to make you uh, the money that you need to make? So you almost could be an independent consultant for these other vendors, your funeral homes, your casket company, all these different things that are a part of that so that you then have these other streams of income coming in. Is that something that you have considered as you're building this business plan? Yes, and to keep from having perceived conflict of interest with one funeral home over another or one casket company over another, we would not be promoting individual companies uh, as far as the price structure goes. Uh, it is, let's just say for the sake of argument, $100. Uh, um, this is like a secondary source of income for me. I'm, I'm, I'm a minister and I have a lot of other things. This is something I'm looking to develop uh, to assist other people with uh, that can be consultants for me. Uh, I'm looking down the road getting this one as, as, a, uh, as, as a viable working source of income uh, and then duplicating it 50 times over across North Carolina. I just think that you being like an outside salesperson almost for multiple parts of this industry then helps them see you as a partner instead of as competition. Mm -hmm. And it, then it also allows you to have this extra income. I get the conflict of interest and you don't want to sway folks in any decision because well if I put you over here I'm going to make $500 versus if I sway you this way I'm only going to make 50 But it still then helps you to be able to continue this service that would be a very valuable service in the community. So. Anyway, just okay. and, oh, sure. and, and a good one. I'm sort of a little too altruistic for my own good sometimes. <laughs> and, and I'm not looking right. to make a million dollars out of this. I'm sure others you have questions or advice and, and he will be hanging around. So afterwards, please give but we got to have time for our other presenter. Um, I have to ask you one last question though. What can we as a community do to help you? You've been a tremendous help this morning just with the, with the feedback and, and questions that I'll go back and look at the video multiple times over to, to hear the questions again, uh, ponder those. Uh, I may, uh, six months from now, I'd like to come back.
Okay. But he will stay after it too. I'm here in the question. Okay. Um, Thank you. 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 It's my party and I'm dying if I want to. You know, that's that. And, uh, and then, it, then she has another one. She says, and now it's Judy's turn to die. Judy's turn to die. I'm just kidding. I'll give up your thanks. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, uh, my name is Bill Bowman. I'm the publisher of the weekly community newspaper here, Up and Coming Weekly. Um, this is Linda uh, McAllister, and this is Carrie Dixon. And uh, while I'm talking, uh, if you just pass out our publications, I'm here to talk to you about this little booklet right here. But for those of you who do not know me, <laughs> that really was a good presentation. We are the local community newspaper, okay? And uh, we're a marketing group. And uh, every we have five publications, and every one of them, okay, serves a purpose in this community. We call it publications of purpose because as a marketing group, we know advertising does not work by itself, especially in this community. And the reason it doesn't is because this community is so unique from anywhere else in the country, believe me, and I see people shaking their head, they know what I'm talking about, and there's two things that make us unique. They want to guess what the first thing is? Anybody? Huh? What? It's the military. Well, the military because we have such turnover. So if you're an insurance agent, you're a tire store, you're a funeral home, the people who knew who you were today are even gone tomorrow and you have a whole new group. What's the other thing? Anybody want to guess? You haven't noticed? We don't have a TV station. Notice? We don't have a TV station. We have 310,000 people in this community and we have no TV station. Roanoke Rapids up on the uh, Virginia border has 19,000 population. They got no TV station. So we don't get to define ourselves on who we are and, and what we do. Okay, we have no media foundation to, to build on. All right. Now I'll ask you a third question. Does anyone want to guess on how many new families move in here every month into Cumberland County? Not people, families. Frank has a big. Yes, they do. <laughs> Anybody want to guess? 1,800. Good guess. 1,500. 1,500 people. That 18,000 people a year coming into this community, or, or families coming into this community, which equals about 60,000 people that don't know you, and you got to get it out. So I'm going to tell you right now. All right, advertising is not going to do it for you, okay? So, I'll ask you another question. What do you think that the Chamber of Commerce, the Better Business Bureau, um, the Rotary Club, the Exchange Club, the Kiwanis Club, um, a business after hours, a Fayetteville after five, a gallery opening, a fourth Friday, what do you think they all have in common? Networking. Absolutely. It's, it's a way that you can get out there to introduce yourself, your business, okay, to, to get people to know you and what you do so they can help you be successful. This book right here is already a success, okay? Our newspaper is 21 years old. Our Kidsville News publication that goes to every child here in the community, okay, and all these papers are located on the back counter, goes to every K through sixth grader in this community is 19 years old, and this pocket guide is 18 years old, okay? The point is, good things, effective things last. This publication is a collaboration between FTCC, the city, the county, the Chamber of Commerce, the Convention and Visitors Bureau, Fort Bragg, okay, and the Cumberland County School System. What do you think all of those organizations have in common? Well, they, they are. 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 
What, what else do you think they have in common? If you're in this book, okay, this book has everything that you need to know about this community, and it's relevant all year long. There's 40,000 of them printed, okay? They're distributed 10,000 a quarter. But you want to know about the schools, you want to know about the county government, the city government, the arts, the entertainment, the festivals, the nonprofit organizations, okay? It's all in this book, okay? It's got an 18-month calendar, okay? So this becomes a piece of collateral to everyone to promote who they are, what they are, and what they stand for, just by being in it. Now, I'll ask you again, what do you think? Now, put your thinking caps on that the, the Chamber of Commerce, FTCC, Fort Bragg, the city, the county, Cumberland County Schools, and the Convention and Business Bureau have in common as it pertains to this booklet right here. They're all going to educate people on what Fayetteville has to offer. That's true. They do that. And the book does that. What else? Good. Good. They're all advertised or carded. They all are sponsors of this book, yes. Yes. But I'm looking for something specific that has to do with you and your business or your organization. What do you think? All those institutions. They all support business in the industry. In the Absolutely. If you are in this book, okay, then those organizations are automatically promoting you because they're giving this book out. It's at over how many, Carrie? 300 locations? 300 locations. Okay, every quarter, okay? So they're advocating for this community. They're advocating for Cumberland County Schools, for the city and the county, and guess what? You're right there with them, okay? And then you get to have as many of these as you want to pass out to your constituents, to your friends and neighbors and visitors coming in here and now you're associated with Fort Bragg, FTCC, Fayetteville State, the city, the county, the convention, business bureau, and you've got all these people telling them that, hey, this is the booklet that you sometimes, you get, some, <laughs> sometimes it gets away from you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got another one. Okay, good. Yeah. I told you they're free. They have many you want. Okay. So, <laughs> so the point uh, again, if you're a business or you're thinking about going into business, all right, or an institution, or you want to promote yourself, and you want to be associated with the other good stuff, because every business that goes in here or institution is vetted. Okay because this is a reflection of our community. The mayor writes, the superintendent writes, the head of the county commissioner's writes, the head of the convention and visitors bureau writes, chamber writes, they're all welcoming people into this community with a little booklet right here, okay? So you need to become familiar with it. You need to get as many as you need to promote this community and yourself and your organization. We only, um, uh, print it once a year. It just came out in January, okay? But we're taking uh, uh, applications for people to be in it for next year, and we're going to put them online in March, okay? But this, along with Up and Coming Weekly, Fayetteville uh, Women's View Magazine, okay? Our Hometown Welcome, which our Hometown Welcome goes out to every one of those 1,500 people every month to introduce services and information that a newcomer needs in this community, okay? And not only does it go out to 1,500 people, but you get a list of the names and addresses of everyone that comes in this town. So all of this is marketing, promotion, it's not advertising, okay? It helps you to define your brand. And your brand, as far as we're concerned, is who you are, what you are, and what you stand for. Okay? And that's what we do. Yes, ma'am. You know, I just want to say I'm looking through pages 68 and 69 are talking about area events where you've got them um, projected from January through December of this year um, as a business owner. Um, again, this is a great resource because you can already see, especially if you're new to business, okay, such and such festivals coming up in June. How can I, as a business owner, get involved in that? So this is an educational tool 
just on pages 68 and 69, and as a business uh, owner, you can tap into what all great things we have going on in Fayetteville and Cumberland County and see how your business can be a part of that and you have time to plan well in advance of uh, next year's uh, uh, stuff going on, the holiday fair or the Veterans Day parade, or more importantly, Dickens Holiday, which is huge in Fayetteville, but you can plan now to be a part of that in January, Abs and so many things have Absolutely. deadline dates well in advance. Absolutely. Carrie? And the great thing is we have other people that are sharing this word with the public. It's not just us and the team here at Open Town Weekly that is passing this out in the community because they believe in it, they see its value, Absolutely. and they're helping us spread it in the community. We have large businesses in here, we have small businesses in here, we have institutions in here, and this is termed a piece of collateral for them. Who wants to guess how much this costs? To me. To me. No. For you to advertise. For, for, for you, well, no, just for you. <clears throat> if, if, if you were using this to promote your business, okay, and you, and you wanted these and you had to pay for them, guess how much it would cost you? No, it is free, but how much do you think it costs? Okay, three cents. That, that's how much the people that participate in this pay for this book. It's about three cents a piece, okay? So you got a quality piece of collateral, like um, Carrie just said, you got everybody promoting you, okay? This is how you build your business, okay? So use them, and I'll tell you, for what we do, all of our publications are called public uh, publication of purpose. An up and coming weekly, it comes out every week. It's on this campus at about 15 locations. Can beat the heck out of this, or your tablet, or your computer, for what's going on in this community. Now, once you know what's going on, then you might be able to use this to get the details or buy the tickets or whatever. But if you're not reading up and coming weekly, it's extremely difficult. For you to really know what's going on here in this community and what kind of great quality of life we have here. So, with that being said, uh, if you go to page, the uh, FTCC page, which is uh, 32 or 33, someone has a copy with Bob Urban's name on it. Who's got that copy? Yeah. Do, do you have that copy? I do. Well, good, Ron, because you just got yourself a lunch at Little Italy Restaurant. Okay? So, okay. so everybody, everybody becomes Ron's best friend. All right, any questions about, about anything, about marketing, about the publications, about the community, I'll be glad to answer them for you. Full page ad is? Pardon me? A full page ad costs? $1,500 a year. Okay, and it can be broken up. We work with our clients. They just put a deposit down on it. We don't even start collecting the money until around August. Uh, and then it has to be paid for. However, once the spot is reserved, then you will go on the online edition, which is uh, late, hyperlink back to your website. Okay, good question. Yes, ma'am. What about hotels? I don't see any hotels in this community. Uh, there isn't any hotels in there because we do offer exclusives for industry. You know, for instance, uh, you know, we'll only have one tire store, you know, one certain, except for like restaurants and things. But the hotel that was supposed to be in there is all carry. They reserved for next year, right? They missed the deadline. Yeah, but the Ramada Plaza uh, and Convention Center will be in there for next year. Good question. Good, good eye. All right, good eye. What's the uh, vetting process? The vetting process is you have to be a legitimate business. And we know who they are. You know, we, we know we don't want, and again, I don't want to offend it, but we don't want, uh, you know. What about like, Sensi sellers? Pardon me? Independent businesses like Sensi and Mary Kay. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they can be in there. Um, but I'm going to tell you, I, I'll tell you a true story. This is 18 years old. About 12 years ago, Priscilla's 
wanted to be, everybody know what Priscilla is, right? No. Adam and Eve is no. 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 it's, it's the same as Adam and Eve. Okay, right. Adam and Eve. So, all right, all right, let's stop. Let's stop. So, I said, so I said to them, and they were a legitimate business, and I said, look, I said, I said, I tell you what, if you can submit a tasteful ad that reflects your business, but not that erotic stuff, but they have other other things in there, especially for Valentine's Day or something. As long as you don't go to the back part. Um, How do you know? I said, we'll, we'll <laughs> sign. <laughs> I heard, I heard, I heard. He had it's to check out the business. My party, you know, my party. No. So they did. They came up with this wonderful ad. It looked good. There was nothing erotic about it. Oh, my God. I thought I would never get through the year, you know, because that is not what the people in this publication want to be associated with. I will tell you, that's not it, okay? And I don't care how tasteful it is, you know, we're not going to put, you know, we're just not going to put it in. That's the better process, okay. you know. So I wouldn't put a hookah lounge in there, for instance. No offense to hookah. Any other questions? That's a good. That's a good question. <laughs> Any other questions? Just to give you an idea of how strong these community publications are, FTCC has been using them for nearly 19 years. Uh, they worked with me when I started. Cumberland County Schools have been with me for uh, uh, 19 years, actually. Uh, PwC and some of the city agencies have been with me the whole 21 years. So, and it's not about whether they like me or not, but these publications serve a purpose in this community. Do they like you? Pardon me? Do I like don't you? think they do. do. I, think they, I think they tolerate me, you know, because you buy paper by the train loads and ink by the barrel. But, but um, uh, we do serve a purpose, and um, our priority is making sure that the businesses and the institutions here are well represented and we get to tell their story. Because your story, you know, is the who, what, when, and where when you when you do have an ad to brand yourself, but we tell the real story about you. All right? If we can be of any assistance, we'll be here. Uh, Linda McAllister and Carrie uh, are our marketing representatives here in this community, as, as am I. So we'll be glad to help any way we can. We appreciate uh, what Cindy does with One Million Cups. It's a great program. We appreciate working with Charmin. Scott Charmin, you've been working together ever since I hit me Bo's days, right, which goes back about 30 years. But uh, thank you all very much. Thank okay. you, Cindy. Before we conclude, we're going to usually give us a couple minutes of what's coming up for the community. Oh, okay. What's coming up right now? <laughs> Right now, this weekend, both Cape Fear Regional Theater and um, Gilbert have plays running. The Gilbert is uh, August Osage County, and The Little Mermaid is playing at Cape Fear Regional Theater. Mm -hmm. Also, tomorrow night at Pembroke, 42nd Street. Monday night, The Beach Boys. Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, right, right. Yes. Yes. Lee Bryce on Thursday night. Mm -hmm. And little, then, little Mermaid was wonderful. I went to the opening night, took my 23 year old daughter. That's what she wanted for Christmas. So, Little Mermaid was fantastic. You need to go see Little Mermaid. And for then, for our business owners um, or representatives in the room, we have the Chamber Business After Hours um, tomorrow evening. It's at the Chamber, which is 159 Maxwell Street. Maxwell Street. If I didn't get it right, it's in your pocket guide and in your Ugly Kind of Weekly. Um, but it is uh, tomorrow night from 530 to 7. It's a great way to get out and network and meet other business owners in your community. And may I mention to you that after Business After Hours, come over to uh, Headquarters Library. They're doing the Civil War Quiz Bowl. That's tomorrow night, Thursday. And you can find all this in your local community newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, we have our Bugs uh, Women's Only Business Networking Group every Tuesday morning, and we have the Fayetteville Ladies Power Lunch <laughs> coming up on Thursday. <laughs> Thank you, Bill and Company. <laughs>